My name is Eric Santner. I'm a professor of German studies at the University of Chicago. And uh, my, my official area of specialization is post-Enlightenment German literature, but um, I kind of entered German, German studies through philosophy out of an interest in Heidegger primarily. I went to Germany to study Heidegger, learn German, and then decided pure philosophy is just a little bit too intense. So I needed more narrative, poetic language, and so I try to work at the border between literary studies, philosophy, and then more and more psychoanalysis. The latest book is it's called The Royal Remains, The People's Two Bodies and the End Games of Sovereignty. And as I said at the lecture, I the, the, the initial title, The Royal Remains, is a wordplay, a pun. Um, remains means like the leftovers, the residue, the decomposing flesh of the king, but also the persistence of political theology and uh, basically problems of legitimation that were at least managed Administer, administer it contained somewhat by the political theology of kingship, the way in which those same questions have migrated now into the new bearer of sovereignty, the people. So in a sense, the whole book is in a certain sense attempt, an attempt to argue that biopolitics is the attempt to manage, to manage the fitness of the people's second body. And it, it can't be managed at the level at which the, uh, the, the, the disciplines and the sciences are trying to manage it because it's, it, it doesn't, it's not simply biological, it's not simply the body, and yet it's, it's corporeal, carnal. So I, I then, to me, the key to, to understanding this was to read Ernst Kantorowicz's book, The King's Two Bodies which is, the subtitle is an essay on the political theology of, uh, a mediev medieval political theology. And he elaborates um, the, the genealogy of the doctrine, which was, which culminates in, in Elizabethan England, the doctrine that the king didn't only have a mortal body, but he also had a sublime body that was the carnal uh, placeholder of sovereignty. And so th that, so not only when a king died, not only did you have to have a funeral for the mortal body, you had to have a kind of um, a certain kind of funereal rituals for the sublime body so that it could be transmitted to the new bearer of kingship. So I, my question is, so what happened to all of those, what happened to this dimension? And my intuition was that it didn't disappear. It's now just dispersed, as it were, democratized. Um, and. So the same thing that that happened to the king, invested with authority, declared, you know, the king is dead, long live the king. This, in a way, the processes around um, the bearer of sovereignty have now become unrecognizable but dispersed. And I want to say biopolitics is one of the sites for the um, the uh, the attending to the uh, the body of the bear, the new bearer of sovereignty, the people. Um, it also involves having to uh, sort out those who um, are uh, threatening to the uh, the people's second body. Not their. It's it's racialized. So you know, one imagines it's it, it's in the genes, but really the preoccupation is the sublime body. That's my argument. And I also I try to then argue. Okay, so biopolitics, and I also try to show that a lot of modernist literature is, in a certain sense without fully, without expli being explicit about it, tracking this dimension. And so, um, so th in the paper I, I gave, it, it, it dealt with Rilke's novel, The Notebooks of Malta Lourdes Briga. And my question was, why are there so many um, bodies that don't, in a way, hang together? Why, why, why is the skin coming off the bodies? And, and why do bodies grow tumors? And it's almost like there's too much body in the figures um, the, the protagonist encounters on the streets of Paris. And in, in a certain sense, as a way to try to understand that, he reflects on early modern sovereigns. And so it's almost like the novel gives us the key to, to in a way, reading you know, the, the symptoms of, you know, of, of a surplus of body, a surplus of carnality in modernity as being 
as belonging to a, ge a genealogy of the political theology of the king uh, into modernity. And the last part of the, uh, the book is about psychoanalysis, and the argument is that Freud developed a science of the people's second body, and he called it unconscious mental activity. And he first discovers the, the, the traces of this body that's not exactly biological in the bodies of, his, of hysterics. And, and he then turns this into, in a way, a general science of, of in a way, a, a carnal, a, a, the carnal manifestation of a virtual reality. And I, so I try to insert Freud into the genealogy of political theology as it moves from early modernity into modernity. So that's basically what the book is. Okay.